What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 news update. Got quite a few topics here to cover in this video. So I haven't really been uploading over the past, you know, couple of weeks, not that often, mainly because there's not been a lot happening in the scene. So I took the opportunity to take a little bit of a break, but I'm back now. So we're going to get into this because even though not a lot's really been happening over the past couple of weeks, it seems that a bunch of stuff seems to all happen at the same time. So over the past couple of days, there's been a few new developments that have surfaced. So we're going to go ahead and talk about them here in this video. So starting off with probably the biggest thing that's happened over the past few days is that we have another bug bounty report from the flow. This time he received a $20,000 bounty for this. And this is his fourth bug bounty report. So the first two got disclosed and that resulted in our 6.72 and 7.55 jailbreaks also 7.02 in there as well. So it's pretty significant whenever the flow reports anything to Sony, he gets a bounty, especially if it's a $10,000 bounty. It's interesting that this is a $20,000 bounty. He also reported something four months ago where he got a $10,000 bounty for it, but that hasn't been disclosed. So whether this will be disclosed or not still remains to be seen. It seems that he hasn't really been attempting to, you know, get these things disclosed by the looks of things lately. So who knows? We have heard from Seaturt, who also got a $10,000 bounty a while ago, that he's looking forward to seeing some stuff get disclosed some point in the future. So, so there's still a good chance that the Hacker One bug reports could result in, you know, some kind of a kernel exploit being disclosed at some point in the future. So yeah, the $20,000 thing is interesting because, you know, these bug reports, they tend to be the same for the PS4 and PS5. So you don't get any more money for a PS4 versus a PS5 uh, bug report. You can see you get the exact same amounts. So because it's above 10,000, you would think it might be something else because normally kernel exploits are considered high severity reports, which you know warrant up to $10,000 bounties. So that you always get a $10,000 bounty, it seems, for a kernel exploit on the PS5 or PS4, whereas any more critical kind of bug could result up to 50,000. So since it's a $20,000 bounty, that would suggest it's more in the critical category. So maybe it's some kind of exploit that is worse than a kernel exploit, maybe a more permanent kind of exploit that he has uncovered here. So that could be interesting. The other speculation is that it could be, you know, two high severity bugs in one. So for example, I don't think it would be two separate kernel exploits because then you know, why would the flow just report them in separate reports? Uh, because if they're completely different, then you would have one report that would get $10,000 and another report for $10,000. So, you know, it's possible that it could be the same kernel exploit for the PS4 and PS5. So $10,000 for the PS4 one and $10,000 for the PS5 one. But if the kernel exploit is exactly the same and it's exploited in a similar way, then I feel like Sony would just give a $10,000 bounty for that since it's the same kernel exploit. So my guess, again, the complete speculation, my guess is that it probably could be, you know, a kernel exploit for the PS4 and PS5, but, you know, the implementation is different enough for it to warrant a separate $10,000 bounty for the PS4 one and the PS5 one. Or, of course, it could be not a kernel exploit. It could be uh, something that's considered more critical, maybe some more permanent kind of exploit. So will we ever see any of this get disclosed? Again, that remains to be seen. But, you know, it's still significant that we now have another bug report from the flow. Fingers crossed he will perhaps request disclosure this time. And of course, it is possible that he has tried to disclose previous exploits, but perhaps Sony denied the request. So, you know, we shouldn't just assume that the flow doesn't want to disclose anything. It could be on Sony's end. So he hasn't said anything publicly on Twitter up till this point. So... Uh, we don't really know anything anything more than that at the moment. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see for that one. So the next thing that I want to cover here is that the Linux payloads for the PS4 have been improved. But unfortunately, as you can see from my comment down here, this does not improve the PS4 Pro's performance. It's still bad on PS4 Pro's. You're getting like less than half the FPS you get on the PS4, the base PS4 with Linux, which is really disappointing. But, you know, this is good for base PS4 users. So as you can see here from the PS Zeta team or PS3 Eta team, 
So yeah, there were some patches that were missing from the PS4 payloads that used to exist in the 5.05 Linux payloads, but when they were ported from 5.05 to higher firmwares, including 9.00, these patches were not included. And because they were not included, we got degraded performance on PS4s. Even base PS4s were getting a slightly degraded experience. So with these patches now reapplied for 9.00, you can expect anywhere from about a 5 to 10 FPS improvement. That's what's been reported. Um, but then there's people like NASCI who are reporting only a 5 to 6 FPS improvement. So still worth a try anyway. It should at least boost your FPS a little bit, um, maybe even a lot. So these patches do not work on the PS4 Pro. Uh, but it's still strange that we get like less than half the performance of base PS4. Because even when the base PS4 didn't have these P-State patches applied, it's still got better FPS than the PS4 Pro, still almost double what the PS4 Pros were getting, uh, which is very strange, especially since there was a working payload on 5.05 that got PS4 Pro performance up to the same level as base PS4, maybe even a little bit higher. I remember it was the PS4 Gen 2.github.io. That was the site I used to go to to load the 5.05 payload that worked on PS4 Pro and gave it good, good performance. But ever since then, any new payloads that have been made for higher firmwares, you get terrible performance on PS4 Pro. There's no way to sugarcoat that, unfortunately. So yeah, sucks for PS4 Pro users. But if you do have a base PS4, you can look forward to better performance now. You, if you use these new payloads, I'm sure most exploit hosts will update their Linux payloads to use these new versions that have the patches applied. So yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't already. See what kind of performance improvements you can get. Uh, that'll be interesting to know. You can leave them in the comments and let me know, you know, if you use a, if a benchmarking software like Valley or Unigen, you know, Heaven Benchmark or something, you can compare the old payloads to the new ones and see what kinds of improvements you're getting. So yeah, anyway, also, since we're on the topic of Linux, even though this is older, I thought I should still mention this, uh, is that NASCI came out with a unofficial build of SteamOS. So this isn't actually SteamOS. This is like a Manjaro... Uh, Linux that's been customized to kind of be like Steam OS and have the same Steam OS features, like having the ability to switch between the kind of Steam Deck interface and the desktop mode. So it has that ability. Uh, so you can check out my full tutorial on installing Linux if you don't already know how to install Linux, but you can follow that tutorial to install this Steam OS. I actually added the download link to that tutorial for the Steam OS build. So you can follow that tutorial and use it to install Steam OS if you want to give it a try. But I thought it was worth mentioning mentioning that as well. So next we have OSM coming out with Orbis Toolbox version 2.0. This is not released yet, but it's ETA soon, apparently. So I thought I would mention this real quick because we haven't really had an update in Orbis Toolbox in a long time. Um, you know, it's been it's been updated to support the higher firmwares, but there hasn't actually been a newer version of Orbis Toolbox. We haven't got any real information about what changes are going to be added in this version. However, we do have news that there's going to be a companion app added for it as well. This new app that you'll run on your computer that will connect to the PS4 remotely over the network. And it looks similar to like, you know, CC API, you know, console manager for uh, the PS3. It looks like the kind of beginnings of that for the PS4. So I thought this was pretty interesting because this companion app can do things like give you your system stats, uh, you know, your temperature readouts, your storage readouts stuff like your firmware version, IP address, you know, payload port, SDK version. It's got a debugger built in, peak, peak poker built in as well, a library manager. And uh, yeah, it just looks like a cool piece of software. You can also remotely uh, enable and disable Orbis toolbox settings from the tool as well, which looks pretty interesting. So can't wait to give this a try once it comes out, but I thought it was worth a mention here in this video. And a few other little things to mention as well. There's been a new version of PS4 Explorer released. Um, so this fixes a few issues, adds support for .dat files, which is interesting. You can download it from the Homebrew store. And we also have an update for the Cheats Manager app by Damian Perino. So I covered this on my channel a few weeks ago as well. So basically there's been a new update here where it will now show you the cheats for games that you actually have installed. So it'll mark them with a little star next to the cheat name in the list so that way you know the ones that have a star next to them are for games that you actually have installed and apparently there's going to be a newer version coming out at some point as well where he's going to add a filter option so you can filter out all the cheats that 
you know, are for games that you don't have installed. So it only shows the ones for games that you do have installed. So that'll be useful when that comes out. A few weeks ago as well, he took it out of beta and released the first public version, which, um, you know, allows you to now access the online database, whereas the version I showed in my video was a beta. So the, the online cheats database wasn't active. Well, you know, it's been a while now. There has been a full release. So that database, online database, is accessible now. So yeah, that's pretty cool as well. So I just wanted to give a quick mention to those little projects that are being updated as well. So yeah, it's interesting why things always seem to come out at the same time. There's like this long lull of nothing going on and then everything pops up at the same time uh, by completely different people, which is a bit weird. I mean, if you look at this thing from uh, the Cheats Manager, that was the 7th of April that Homebrew Tester posted that. And then you've also got this on the 5th of April. And then you've got OSM again on the 7th of April, the same day. And then you also have the PS Zeta thing on the 7th of April again. Like everything seemed to happen on the 7th of April for some reason. And uh, yeah, and the Hacker One report was a few days a few days ago as well. So but anyway, hopefully that brings you guys up to speed on what's been going on here in the PS4 scene over the past few days. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.